Hello, this is Farah. Okay, so today um, I want to, first of all, say thank you to the new subscribers. Um, I didn't expect to reach 150 subscribers. It's tiny compared to other people, but for me, it's a big deal. And, um, and to the people who have been with me for a long time, um, also thank you. Uh, you know, it's been a pleasure. It's been a joy to, um, create videos and brainstorm ideas and just participate and, um, chat with people, get to know people, um, have these interactions with, with you guys who are also into the same thing, you know, tarot and astrology and, and all things esoteric and that kind of stuff. So it's been really, really cool. Um, so as I'll probably put somewhere in the title, like this is a, a chance for you to get to know me a little bit better. Um, and I thought I would do it through my birth chart because, you know, I figured why not. I, I love astrology. I do. Um, I love tarot too, but I also love astrology. Um, so in the, you know, what's really cool about tarot is that, um, you know, you can find your zodiac um, card or your astrology card in the majors and in the minors. So, um, you know, so for the majors, I am, well, and I'm going to, I'm going to use the, this um, Western um, astrology. If you want me to do sidereal, um, let me know in the comments and I can do sidereal. I'm not going to do them both in one video because if I try to do both in one video, it's just going to be too long. So, um, and to be perfectly honest, I, I, I'm so used to thinking in Western astrology that, you know, and I've only learned about sidereal so shortly or just recently that, you know, I'm still getting used to sidereal. Um, okay, so yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a sidereal thing of my chart as well. Um, so back to what I was saying about the tarot. So you can, you, you can know, you know, if whichever zodiac sign you are and if it is what it is in the majors. And you can also do that for the minors. So in the majors, I am an Aries. And so I'm the emperor, um, or the emperor is my card. Um, so, and then, uh, you know, I am born on March 27th, 1974. I'm 49 years old. Um, so that because March 27th that makes me my minor card would be the two of wands which honestly it, it kind of sucks it sucks to know that I'm a two of wands but you know I mean everybody's got there's I know there's other people that have got difficult cards for their and everybody's got some sort of difficult aspect so that's the that's like the cool thing we've all got our positive and negative right so yeah I mean I um my ascendant and my moon are in Taurus so you know I come across as a Taurus I I I've had a lot of people tell me I sound very calm and very relaxed and very reliable and stable and dependable and that's that Taurus thing. Plus, you know, um, there's a thing in astrology where a planet will be exalted or um, in detriment 
in certain signs. So, and I, just by hearing that you can get the idea. So if it's something's an exalted, then that's, that's positive. Like, you know, it's like super strength, supercharged, um, more powerful, um, works better and detriment is, it doesn't work as good. So moon and, um, Taurus is exalted. So, yeah. And then, so, but the, the, what the, what kind of sucks about it is though, is because my moon is in my ascendant, that means I wear my heart on my sleeves. And I, you know, even before I was like really digging into astrology, um, I knew I wore my heart on my sleeve. Um, in fact, I don't know if I can show you this, but can you see that? There's like a little, there's like a little blue dot right there on my shoulder. So, um, that's a birthmark. And, um, so yeah, I, I mean, I always, I always knew I wore my heart on my sleeve. So, you know, I, I, I could never play poker to save my life. You know what I mean? So, um, and then, yeah, I've got a lot of Gemini stuff going on, you know, um, I have Mars and the South Node and Saturn all like right here next to each other. So my, you know, I'm, I'm very, Gemini has a lot to do with siblings and I am like, I am devoted to my brother and my sister. It's, it's kind of, I'm devoted to them to a fault, basically, if that makes sense, you know, and it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but I mean, it is what it is, you know, and those who know, know, you know, so, um, and what I mean by that is just that in, in my family, fourth house of family, um, there was a lot of, Look, I'm going to call a spade a spade, okay? So this is Leo. Um, there was a lot of ego. There was a lot of pride. There was a lot of showing off. Um, and, you know, we are all very sensitive people. Like me, my brother, and my sister are all very, very sensitive people. And we've got a lot of water, you know, sensitivity in us. And so um, it's been, it was tough, you know what I mean? It was tough. Plus the fact, like... Look, even if you're not into astrology, because like I said in this video, it's going to be like get to know me, but also through astrology, um, uh, a first generation um, American, because my parents are immigrants, so, and they're immigrants from a Muslim country, so, you know, they, they still wanted to do the Muslim ways and the Pakistani ways, and, you know, we're here in America, so that that did a number on us too. So, um, yeah, it kind of, well, frankly, it kind of messed us up a lot, <laughs> but, um, and so, yeah, my son here in the 12th house, 12th house is of like undoing the subconscious. So, plus I have Chiron. Chiron is the, you know, the wounded healer. So it's like, I have done so much work around my subconscious and because because honestly it feels like there is so much um built up junk in my family tree you know what i mean um i mean like the stuff i would tell you 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 would just be shocked like the fact that my parents had an arranged marriage or that they don't share a bedroom or, you know, we were, um, uh, we didn't have any contact with our extended family or, you know, that kind of stuff. So, um, I had to do a lot of, you know, there's just, there, it feels like there's a lot of, um, unhealed wounds with my subconscious and, you know, and it, it, it because of Chiron, it, it, you know, Chiron is like, you know, it feels like I'm never going to be able to fix myself, but like I can help others people with their subconscious, you know, um, and yeah, it kind of feels that way, you know, for like, 
in the muggle world i i did a lot of work with mental health because so um 12th house is also mental health i've i've been a been i've worked and i've done a lot of work and a lot of help for um jobs or things like that with people with mental health so yeah i'm very very familiar with mental illness and mental health and that kind of stuff so you know it is what it is i mean it's like it's like a blur um a curse and a blessing you know what i mean so um we can we can give to others what we can't give to ourselves so to speak and you know i'm still on um antidepressants but i know a lot of people are a lot of people are on antidepressants but anyway get off of that topic right so um yeah i and the thing is is that you know the um gemini is ruled by Mer mercury so very plus i can you see this right here where there's this um from here to here to here um from gemini to aquarius to libra so that's that's a grand earth trine so you know i i have this um you know very airy kind of mental way about me and if you go and look you can go and look on my channel like i did another birth chart reading and and i i have like a series like an ongoing series of what i learned cuz i'm all, constantly mars in gemini it's like plus south node you know i'm constantly just gathering 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 information and it it, it feels like i i just i can't get enough information you know and really i need to go towards this which is the north node and be like okay i got enough knowledge now i'm going to deliver it you know now i'm going to teach it but i don't know i don't know we'll see um but yeah plus um what is this saturn saturn and it's it's close enough to mars so you know that's another thing too um it's like it's like this discipline you know like this limiting it's like i i want to you know do more and act more with with the knowledge and because gemini could also be the teacher too and and for those of you that don't know you know i got my master's degree in teaching um but i just couldn't i couldn't do it you know like i couldn't i couldn't handle being a teacher in a public school system because depression you know i just i couldn't do it plus you know i'm if you go back and look at some of my videos you'll see that you know i have a very young looking face um and and my voice is also very gentle soft spoken sweet that doesn't work in a public high school you know it really doesn't and um it just it didn't work so yeah but and i know um, like people would tell me they're like um you know i should probably title this rambling too i probably will but um they made other suggestions but yeah just exhausted tired that all, all of that kind of stuff so um but anyway so when i talked about my voice um you know, I have my third house of communication, cancer. Cancer is is nurturing, sweet, gentle, kind, you know, and I think I think that's where that gentle, sweet um because I was like, what? Why why do I because I don't think I sound calm or or relaxed. I don't I certainly don't feel calm and relaxed a lot of times, but you know, and, and I don't think I sound sweet and gentle and soft-spoken, but other people do. Other people tell me I do, so, oh, geez. So, you know, that's where that comes in. And, you know, um, uh, I'll, I'll just ignore the... I, I personally think for me, it makes sense that, you know, because these empty houses means that, like, there's been difficulty here um 
And so we, I have had difficulty in the home and I have had difficulty around fun, but, um, you know, mm, for me in my home, you know, there is a lot of, um, not just me and, but like my family and our home and all of this, that there's like, because, you know, Pakistani American and that whole unique quality and just being a little bit different and all of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it is what it is, but, um, and Virgo in, um, the fifth house, I do, you know, some of my best friends that I've had throughout my lifetime have been Virgos. Um, it's just, yeah, I have, I have fifth house, fifth, I keep, I'm stuttering, sorry. Fifth house is fun. And I do have fun with Virgos. Um, uh, yeah, they, I just find them very interesting. They're also very mercurial, you know, they also have a very mercury sense about them. And, you know, I have this Gemini sense about me. So, I mean, it matches, you know, and, um, but the other side of it too, is that I am a, I have, in the past, I've been extremely detail-oriented and perfectionistic to a fault, which it almost, it, it, it did, it became a bad thing, you know what I mean? Perfectionism to, to the point where it was just a mess, you know, and it's like, you can become a perfectionist where it gets to the point where you're like, you procrastinate too much and you just you see the flaw in everything, you know, or like something could be 99% good. And I will see the 1% that, like the 1% um, flaw in, in the thing, you know, meh, whatever. Um, so, uh, what else? Oh, yeah. So, Here's, here's another thing too. So I have Uranus and Pluto, but they're both um, retrograde. Um, there's a little, let me see if I can make this bigger. Can you see that? There is a little R next to the Pluto and the Uranus. And um, there we go. I'll just bring this down. There we go. Okay. So Uranus and Pluto in retrograde. So that, you know, that's like, it's almost, when things are retrograde, it could be like a reviewing or um, reanalyzing or, or reconsidering, but it also could be very internal and it could be like, it doesn't flow out, you know? So Pluto, my power doesn't, I have a hard time with, using my power and this is in the my daily life you know six house of daily life and um and also uranus of of uh what's it called change so there there's a lot of like i struggle with my power on a you know on a daily level plus you know i my life is my personal routine, my daily routine can be, is ex completely, um, what's the word? It's unpredictable. Like it's unpredictable because I have sleeping problems, 12th house stuff and nightmares, 12th house stuff, plus undoing 12th house stuff. Cause the sun, the sun is in the 12th house. Um, if I change it to, um, sidereal, I think it's still in the 12th house actually, but, um, yeah. So, uh, anyway, what was I saying? Um, it's this, uh, yeah, you know, and I have to, and this is the, this is the thing. Okay. Cause I saw somewhere, I saw something recently and they said, well, you know, because I have such and such and such and such, it's not my fault. No, no. Just because you have like um, 
uh, a weakness in a certain area does not mean that that becomes an excuse. Do you know what I mean? Because here's the thing, like we are meant to evolve. We're meant to change. We're meant to grow. We're meant to progress, right? So I believe that we can only do that um, by looking for something to, like an antidote. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so in astrology, they would say like, look it to the opposite sign and that would give you your antidote. So, um, and while I did say a bunch of negative stuff about this, it doesn't mean like, well, okay, then, you know, where, where is it? Well, it means that like, I need to use my, um, I need to use the ab ability of understanding mental health and and actually lean into that so it's like you go from here and you lean into that more and it'll help that plus leaning into this will help that I don't know if that makes sense but it makes sense to me so um but yeah I'm just explaining myself in this video but so um seventh house of marriage or something like that plus fifth house of kids I don't have any kids I don't I've never been married um yeah it just is what it is um I don't know uh whatever probably Virgo too picky probably um perfectionism probably Scorpio too protective of myself you know probably probably yes <laughs> Anyway, um, plus the other thing too is I always keep the thing, I always think about how the fact that my, my sister, who is, um, you know, relatively close to my age, she's a Scorpio. So, you know, it's like, um, we balance each other out or yeah, you know? So anyway, um, but this, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about death or that kind of thing, but I'm just going to talk about it because the eighth house can be death. And I can tell you that I'm deadly afraid of water. Like I, ca I cannot swim. And so I was like, that's so weird, you know, because, you know, some people have afraid of heights or afraid of small spaces or, a lot of people are afraid of dying, but I have Neptune, right? I have Neptune, which is water. It's, you know, Neptune, the god of water, or, or it's also associated with Pisces. So I was like, oh, okay. Like maybe, you know, I could die from drowning, you know, or um, maybe I drowned in a past life. Who knows? I don't know. But um, anyway, so I have North Node here in the 8th house. Plus, 8th house is also the occult and all things taboo, right? So, um, you know, there's this part of me that is, is leaning into, and obviously I'm doing this here on, on this channel, like leaning into um, esoteric kind of stuff and things that are the mainstream isn't doing. However, the mainstream is doing more of it, you know, plus Sagittarius, um, that philosophy side, you know, I could, um, I think I could be full more philosoph philosophical, but you know, you gotta know who and when to talk philosophical to, you know what I mean? So, and like I said, um, I did go to college and I do, I do have my master's degree in teaching and, um, that is, uh, ninth house stuff. And so this says MC. So it's kind of like, you know, where is my, um, your mid heaven? Like, what are you, like your great accomplishment or also connected to the 10th house of, you know, where, how are you going to be known? You know, what's your legacy or whatever, but, um, and so, you know, I don't, I would actually love to go back to school and get a doctorate degree. 
a PhD, but you know, that, that is not happening, not with money and time and what's the point there is no point really because it's not like it's gonna get me a good job plus here look at this look at that i have black moon lilith black moon lilith which is extremely rebellious because i can tell you here's the thing um this higher knowledge and spirituality thing you know like i said my my parents are, well, my mom, my mom is very religious. I am not, I am not religious, you know, and this is Capricorn. And, and so Black Moon Lilith is rebellious. So yeah, I've been rebellious, you know, with, um, my schooling and because here's the thing, like in high school and in college, my, um, my parents told me like I had to become a doctor because that's what, Pakistani people did in the 1980s so and I had no choice and of course I self I self-sabotaged it you know I I caused my own reckoning but then later on I was like okay 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 I will try to overcome this by being nurturing and wanting to serve others children cancer motherly energy you know, and, um, teach, you know, do teaching kind of stuff, you know, so also, yeah, but it's, it, it still didn't work out because didn't have counseling, didn't have medication, didn't understand myself even at that time, you know, so, and then right now, you know, it's interesting because Pluto is in Aquarius, which is like the big thing. If anybody knows a little bit about astro, even if you know a little bit about astrology, you know Pluto's in Aquarius. And a Aquarius is technology. Aquarius is the collective, you know, and I have Venus here. So plus here's the other thing too. I, um, Venus in Aquarius is, is, loves the weird and unusual and bizarre. And I do, I do, I, I admit it. I love the weird and unusual and bizarre. I mean, that's just right up my alley, you know? <laughs> so why? I don't know. I don't know. It just is what it is. <laughs> but, um, and then here too. So I have Pisces here and this is my Mercury and my Jupiter in the 11th house. 11th house is also social media, right? Social media, friends, so, and Jupiter is good luck and uh, Mercury. Now, the thing is, is that I know when I talk, I can kind of give off a Luna love good type of vibe because I feel like I could be kind of, I could sound kind of scatterbrained or, you know, not really to the point or not as direct or, or say some weird stuff like some some like for no good reason something weird will come out of my mind mouth mind mouth same thing <laughs> see there there you go there's an example okay but it's it's pisces energy man it's pisces you know pisces and mercury my thinking my thinking is so piscean you know it's like up in the clouds or it's in i don't know in la la land you know so it, it, whatever it just is what it is I suppose but um yeah so um that's just like you know I try to make these videos not terribly terribly long but um I thought that would be kind of interesting for you and for me to talk about um who I am and also a little bit through my birth chart. And if you're interested in looking at the sidereal, put it down in the comments and I'll do that later. Okay, much love and appreciation. Take care, be well, and talk to you soon. Bye.